So this maps out basic placement of you know the features of the face. And I'm going to just you know kind of come in here and you know, indicate you know the edge of the nose where that's going to be, place that, um, and then you know, maybe indicate where I'm going to see the upper lip. Right outside the jawline, if I come, since the head's slightly tilted, you know, down. But if I come across the eye line over and follow the curving of the head, right past the jawline is the top of the ear. There, right there, and then from the base of the nose, follow the curve of the head over, and there's the bottom of the ear. And I just want to kind of indicate basic shape of that ear right there. And then the rest of the head disappears behind the ear. There's the, where the jaw comes forward. And there's the shoulders. Okay. This is about the only drawing that I'm going to do. Now, if you want to get in there with smaller brushes or whatever and do more detailed drawing, that's totally fine. But the difference between drawing and painting, with drawing, you're building everything up with line. You know, if you're using a pencil or a pen or whatever, it's all line work. Painting, you're finding shape. What's the shape that the shadow makes under the eye socket? Or what's the shape that the highlight makes on the forehead? And so that's why, you know, when you get your brush going, you're looking at getting planes mapped out through finding the shape. So, as I am getting in here now to the darkest features of the portrait, which are the eyes, eyebrows, and you know, nostrils and things like that, I'm really thinking more about shape than I am drawing you know, individual folds of skin or you know, what have you. So, coming off of the top of the nose, I can see, you know, here's the eyebrow there, and then it comes up under the, the, the brow, and this eye is just a shape in shadow, barely even, you know, noticeable against, you know, the darkness of the background, but there's just this shape. And same over here. I come across the bridge of the nose and I have a shape where this shadow comes down across the bridge of the forehead. And then there's a shadow that's on the lower lid of the eye, and then just inside the eye itself. And I'm just working in the most extreme dark value at this point. That's, that's all we've got for there. And then we have a shadow that comes down the back side of the nose, and comes down the whole side of the face, comes up underneath the bottom lip, over the chin, and then around the chin like this, and then it comes down the neck. Here, almost through the center of the forehead and up. I've got this nice shape of shadow that comes all the way into the hairline. I'll block that in. Start 
to uh, maybe indicate the contour of the head as it comes out from the forehead and then the cheekbones come out back and indicate the hair might be shadow across there where the hair some nice shapes inside the ear where the skin kind of flaps and folds. There's a shape there. There's inside the ear the canal part kind of underneath there. And there's a shadow that wraps off of the nostril that and then there's the nostril itself and it's just a little you know, semicircle shape like that yeah. already starts to look like a face doesn't it with just one value being added and just finding the shapes that are on the face and it's all you know related to the skull Underneath, you know, the way the light hits your face is based on the shape of your skull. These, the eyes are sunk and shadowed because they're in sockets, right? So this is all bone structure and skin and muscle structure. But just think about shape. That's all you're worried about is shape. Well, I've got the dark mixture on the palette. Go ahead and come on in here and beef up the background. Go ahead and do that so that it pulls the portrait closer into the painting. So just add the dark here. Actually, this whole cheek is pretty dark. I don't really have a lot of light on that side. And this is, you know, I hope you guys see this as actually something that's fun and not frustrating, but one of the fun things about making your art, whether it's your painting or drawing or whatever, it's to go through the process of losing it and finding it and losing it and finding it, breaking it down, building it up. So even though, you know, it looks like I'm losing what I just drew, I'm, I'm actually, in, you know, having the face incorporate itself into the painting as a whole. The space, the portrait, everything starts to come together as a painting. So don't lose that, you know, understanding that you're making a painting. So have fun with it and, you know, let yourself kind of get lost in the process of, you know, building things up, tearing things down. It makes for a much stronger uh, much stronger work when you do that, all right? So I've got this working for me. Um, I'm going to cool up the dark by adding some of the phthalo blue to it, the mixture. And I'm going to go ahead and come in here and deal with um, the vest that's on, uh, that's in the, the photograph. I've got this, I'm wearing this, you know, crazy ski vest kind of thing, uh, whatever that choice was. And it's got a got this cool shadow that's cast all you know across the shoulder. This really dramatic shadow, and then you get the little flap of fabric, the little collar there. I'm gonna pull that out, and this all goes up underneath the chin. You know, it connects back to the head. You know, right through about there, I guess. And it's just, again, it's just a simple shape. And then we have the other side as it comes out from behind the ear. There's a shadow there. And this comes down the collar of the vest into the collar of the shirt. And down, you know, this way. 
get to all that good stuff as we go. Okay? Lines there. So now, um, I go from dealing with just the dark value to now I can run and place the middle, and now I can place the highlight and block those areas in the same way. What is the shape that those values exist as on the face? And then from there, it's just a matter of getting more um, detailed as we go. So now I want to add a little bit of white to my palette and got burnt sienna on there, maybe a little yellow ochre just to kind of orange up the flavor a little bit with a bit of an orangish quality to, uh, to the painting. Okay. Again, everything is still staying fairly thin. So. Mixing um, burnt sienna with yellow ochre and a hint of alizarin crimson. And then adding just, here, let y'all see what I'm up to here. Adding just a touch of white. You know, if it helps, if it helps while you're doing all this, you know, hold your brush up to your photograph. You know, see how close you're getting to where you need to be for your value and for your color. You know, kind of check yourself as you go. See if you're happy where everything's going. So, come right up next to your shadow shape. Just let the, let the two shapes meet. And, you know, I'm going to just work around what I already laid down. And drop in. This comes right down the edge of where the eye stops. And down the bridge of the nose. I've got a little bit. Comes down. Like that. out the center of the chin, something like that. As the head, you know, as the head turns away from the light source, you know, at the base of the jaw, that you know, picks up this value a little bit more down here at the base. of it inside of the ear. Shape. Definitive mark. Okay. 
Now I'll work on the third section, and this is just adding more white, maybe a little touch more yellow to it, but just pale up that middle value a lot more. And then, just like before, just lay this right next to the neighboring value. And just follow the shape that it makes down the face. Think about the skull. You know, the skull is round, then you hit the temple, so it kind of ducks in. You've got to go around the eye socket. And you come down the cheekbone. This is all a bright value in through here. And you come down the cheekbone. It wraps around like that. I pick up the highlight where the skin folds off of the corner of the nostril like that. It meets here. And then, you know, as the nose protrudes out, this whole side of the nose picks up light. So we get this triangular shape on the nose. And as it comes forward, it picks up light that goes around the nostril like that. And on around. under here like that. and then the lip a little bit on the chin like that. Uh, the lower the lower eyelid picks up a little light the upper As the ear comes around, pick up light here, inside, like that. Finish off like that. And, you know, Go ahead and the hair needs to be built up along the way as well. And think of the hair as a mass. You're not, you're not painting individual hairs. You're capturing areas of value in the hair. So there's a highlight here that comes down like that. back into some dark and bring the hair down as such.
Everybody wants to get in on this, don't they? Okay, so. Okay. Um, as we get as we get a little further along, um, I'll add the glasses and things later. I wanted to get into the actual you know facial features today. Now, what you can do, just like we talked about in painting one, if you all remember. Now that you've got all your values kind of together, you know, one against another, you know, now you can come in here with a clean brush and, you know, a soft touch and blend the values together a little bit and merge them and start to think of the contour of the bone structure against the skin. You know, this forehead's got some dips and wrinkles and stuff in it, some pockets of different shadows that, you know, make it a lot more lifelike. Soften this transition across the nose a little bit. Bring that, sweep that down into the side of the face. Shadow here can be a little softer, a little more blended. Work on that. Go. Pull this color down and finish off that jaw. You know, I'm not over painting. This is brush is doing very specific things. I'm wanting it to not lose the painterly quality by smearing everything. It's very deliberate, very decisive and kind of strokes, but uh, still blending things together. And you know you're gonna you're always gonna lose a little bit you know of your of your intensity and that's okay because again it's breaking it down pulling it back out so you're always gonna go back at some point and rehit shadows or re-establish highlights or redefine the edge of something okay that's just part of it so. Don't sweat it. If you lose things along the way, you'll go right back and find them again. Okay?
Now, this is you know, far from done, obviously. But take this week, take this week to get your portrait at least to the point where you have, you know, your major values laid down. And if you want them to be blended somewhat, work out that basic beginning process, okay? Then what we'll do is next Tuesday, I'll tighten this guy up and put in however many details or however tight I want to get. We'll do that next Tuesday. And then you guys will have the following class period and then all of the next week to bring your portraits together to be finished. And that'll be the end of midterm. Okay? So, y'all... Y'all can handle this, right? Yeah. Have fun with it. Have fun with it. Hopefully you've all got your photographs ready to go, printed, and you got a surface prepared so you don't lose class time today. So, there you go. Have fun. I mean, I, I just printed mine on an eight and a half by eleven piece of paper, eight by ten.